we're going to look at a an Android application called Greetings, just one step above a sort of hello world. The URL for this application can be found at the address seen, and uh, it will include the layout, the activity underscore main.xml, and the Kotlin code, mainactivity.kt. Okay. So here is the application just being shown in an AVD and we'll compare that to the XML layout. And so it's a constraint layout, first thing. And then there is a text view that says enter your name. We see it over here in the AVD. And then next to that is an edit text where the user can type. And the constraints are such that it is next to the text view. So a label and then a place to edit the text. Under that, we see a button that says English. And next to that, a text view that starts off with just all dashes. And it is constrained to be next to it. Under that, there is a button for French and a text view next to that, again, with starting off with all dashes. And so we're going to greet the user in different languages, depending on which buttons are pressed. And we're going to greet the user by name, the name entered in the edit text for the name. So then there's one more, a button for German and a button and a text view for Spanish. And then we're at the end of the constraint layout. So that's what the design looks like. Let's operate it. Uh, we'll say hello to Fred in French and German and English and Spanish. Okay. And if we change the name, then the buttons go back to and they're re enabled, and then we can click them again. All right, so now let's start looking at the main activity.kt. And the imports are usually collapsed in Android Studio. So that's a thing to pay attention to. Um, you know, here we have the main activity. So I sort of started off with a hello world project. So uh, it started off with. It gave me the package, I didn't type that. The imports I did not type. As I type things, it may have asked me to add to the imports, but I did not do any of that typing explicitly myself. I could get Android Studio to type it for me. On create, on create, set content view, all those were typed for me by Android Studio. So the first thing that I typed here was uh, var I'm declaring. I'm declaring a username, and that's going to be a string. And the next thing that I'm going to have here is a connection between my interface, and I showed you, so I had that edit text at the top, and I gave it an ID of et name. I like to give my IDs, a little prefix, and tells me what kind of thing it is. So ET for edit text. And then the rest of the name, uh, the rest of the ID telling me what it, uh, what role it plays within the program. So this is a place for the user to enter a name. So ET name. And then I tend to give it, and then this is what's over in the resources. And so the layout was part of the resources. And then I'm grabbing things from the resources based on their IDs. So I'm looking at, at the IDs of resources. And then I had something with this particular ID ET name. I'm bringing it, I'm sort of making a code version of that. And so I use this find view by ID. And that's going to bring over a generic view, but then I'm going to sort of 
cast that as an edit text to sort of emphasize that this is an edit text that I may be doing edit text type stuff with it. And then I give that uh, variable a name over here in uh, Kotlin. And I tend to give it the same name. That's not necessary, but it's just what I tend to do to give it the same name as the ID over in the uh, layout. And here we have Val. Okay, so this is making the connection between our code and our layout. Um, I have certain conventions I tend to follow with this uh, prefix and then giving this and this the same name. That's Those are just uh, conventions, not anything that has to happen. I used for the username, I used var, but for this I used val. And what val means, it's like final. It means that you're not going to change it. So uh, with the username, you saw I did change it. I was Fred and then I was Mary. And so that can vary. And so was declared with var. Now, when you say valid, it doesn't mean that you cannot change what's in the, that a user can't change what's in the edit text. It means that this connection from code to the layout, that's not going to change. I'm not going to all of a sudden call ET name and relate it to some other widget over in the layout. That's the part that's not going to change. Okay, and when I first, type this, it knew what string was when I typed this, but down here, when I first typed edit text, it came in red, and then it would be squiggly underline up here where you see main activity.kt at the top, that tab, that would be red, uh, squiggly underlined, and this edit text would be the text red, and then I can put my cursor in that red text, and a little uh, hint will pop up to say I could hit alt enter, and then if I hit Alt Enter, I'll get a little context sensitive menu and it will tell me to import it. And if I double click that, it will import it for me. So as I say, a lot of this stuff that is typed here, I did not type, I got it to Android Studio to type it for me. And now I'm doing that connection between layout and code for my other widgets that I am somehow changing. So I am, or interacting with. So I'm going to uh, display a greeting in English, in French, in German, in Spanish. So that is all these uh, text views. So they are affected by code and then I'm going to change their text. And then I have the buttons that I'm going to interact with. So I'm going to need a listener to listen for the click of that button. So those are all my connections. I had one label at the top that just said, enter your name. And that had the words in it in design. And I'm not going to change those words. I'm not going to react. The user's not going to click on that or mouse over it or, or anything like that. So that was, there's no sort of code version of that first text view that says enter your name. There was no reason for that. Okay, so let's get on to the events. So I'm going to start with uh, the, the, ing, the button for English, and we are establishing here a listener. So we are going to tell the system that we want it to listen for the clicks on the English button, and then we will tell it what we want it to do. Okay. So with this one, I started to do some of the typing and then I can get uh, the system to fill in some of it. Um, there are different versions. This The set on click listener is sort of an established thing that, that is written in sort of Android Kotlin. And then there is a method that we are responsible for, the on click method. We it exists, but it but the class is written telling us that we must write our own. It doesn't make sense for us not to write our own click. Why have a click if we're not going to do something in the computer? Previously, they have no idea 
what it is we want it to do. Okay, so this is, I'm gonna show you like three versions uh, of this. This is the most uh, verbose version, the, the, the sort of the one with the most words. Um, and so we're starting here, we, the, the, the method for when we establish an on-click listener, the method we are responsible for is called on-click. So fun is just the shortened version of function and override says that, that we must write our own. So we are writing, this exists, but it, but the rule is that we have to write our own and this is us announcing that we are writing our own. And it has an argument of the view. So the view is uh, something more general than the button. So the, the button is a view. So the view sort of represents a sort of a, a, an area on our layout, a, a region, and that uh, so it takes up space and uh, can be seen and has a position on the layout and so on. Um, so it's a little more generic than the button. So if 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 we want to do anything with this button that is uh, very button specific, we might have to cast. Okay. So that's the name of the function that we must uh, write for ourselves. We're announcing that we're doing that, uh, announcing that it's a function and it has an argument, which is a view. And we are getting, this is us, we establish a connection, ET name above. We are getting the text out of that the user wrote and we are converting it to a string. So a text is a little bit more than just a string. And so we're saying we just want the, the string part of it and we're calling that username, which we declared above. And then we're setting the text so this can be, there are different ways to do this. Uh, there's like a set text as a possibility, but here we can get away with just saying TV English, that text view that was next to the English button, set its text, make it uh, hello, and then insert, uh, this dollar sign tells us to insert the variable username. So that was Fred and then later it was Mary. This V again was the view and we are changing its color. So that's something generic enough to a view and I'm changing the color of it to magenta. So you can see it over here, this sort of hot pink color. And then uh, I made the view, uh, took its is clickable property to false. So after they've clicked the button, they're not going to be able to click it again unless the user types something, a new name. If they type a new name, then I'm going to start, like make it uh, the clickable true and make it, make it so the user can click it again. This question mark here is because in this on-click method, the view was uh, nullable. So we've got to say, this is saying, if, if V does indeed exist, change it to magenta. If it does indeed exist, make its clickable, is clickable property false. Okay, so that was English. Now we're going to do basically the same thing for, for all of them. And we're just showing you different versions of this on click. And we're just going to sort of take away a piece each time. So here's the French version. So we had our English version which said, and it's just basically this, this top line, this is the big thing that's changing. So before we had override function on click and the argument. Down here, when we get to French, all we are left with is the argument. So there, there was one method that we were responsible for writing. So if there's code, this system can assume that that code was the, the statements for that function. So it says, you don't have to say override. It knows you have to override. It doesn't, you don't have to say function. You, it knows it's a function. You don't have to say on click. It knows that that's the thing you're responsible for writing. But you might decide, especially down here, that 
uh, you want that argument V because you might want to use it. So, so if you're not going to name the function then, but you still want to sort of specify the argument, you can use what I'll call here an arrow function that you say uh, I have to separate the, the argument of the function from the statements of the function, you can use this arrow. So on one side are the arguments, or in this case, single argument, and then after on the other side of the arrow are the statements. So same thing as before, go to the edit text, get the name, assign it to the variable username, and this is the text, the French version. So say bonjour with that username. And then I'm setting the background color I'm using a different color instead of using uh, a predefined color of magenta. I'm sort of using the RGB method of color to throw together this sort of light orangey thing. So 255, 204, 153 and setting it uh, its clickability to false. So it can't be, again, it can't be clicked once you click it unless, unless we re-enable it effectively. Okay. Next version, German and Spanish are going to be the same. Um, so I just remind you, in, in English, we had override function on click and view. V for V is the name of the view. In the French, all we kept is the V. In the German, we even take out the V and Spanish is the same as the German. So we've even eliminated the view, but you can see here in this gray that it, it's the systems put something there sort of, this is sort of like a hint, but it's telling you that there's something there, the system knows it, it's just, um, it supplied it for you and it's called it. So same as before, get, go to the edit text, get the text, convert it to a string. That's the username, construct our German text. And now we're going to change the background color of the German button. And, and we start off with it. So now there's the argument is implied. And if we want to access it, we use the keyword it. And I'm setting the background color. And now here I'm using um, ARGB method. And that is sort of so color wise, alpha is, is, the, is it sort of see through a bit? Is, it, is, is there some transparency? And then I again made the button that you can't click it. Spanish was the same as German except the greeting, hola. Okay. So we're done with the buttons and we just wanted to show with those different buttons, the sort of various uh, on click, uh, how, how much you have to write. So you could name the function and say that you're overriding it, and name the variable or, or the argument or just have the argument or with an arrow function or, uh, not have that, not even have the argument, but just have it implied to be the keyword it. Okay, now we're moving over to a different event. And this is the event associated with typing in the edit text. So ET name, and we're adding a text change listener. So when the user makes any changes to the text in the edit text, this function wants three methods after you've changed the text, before you change the text, then I'll say this is sort of during the changing of the text or something on text change. And it wants all three, even though we're not going to write any code for two of them. So I've just sort of left them here and left it blank. And then I put all my code in the on text change. Oops, sorry. And then what I'm usually doing in when the user is changing the text is I had created some response based on what they had entered and now they are changing what they have entered. And so I'm just sort of taking away my 
my answer. I could, I could be figuring out a new answer while they type, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm just deciding to, to clear out, to take away my answer. If they want a new answer, they must hit the buttons again. Okay, so here is setting the text. So up above, sorry, I keep scrolling up and down on you, but here I'm setting the text of uh, TV English dot text equals and, and setting it equal to a string. And down here's a different way to just use the set text method of the TV. So text view English, TV English, set text, and I'm setting it equal to a bunch of dashes. Same for French, German, Spanish. So I clear out any answer I might pre previously have. You remember here, if I, I have right now, I have Mary, and if I add Mary Anne, it cleared out all of those greetings. It made all of the buttons a light gray. I don't know why I chose light gray. It's probably a bad choice. Gray tends to imply that something's disabled and mine are light gray when they're enabled. So it's a little bit perverted, but what have you. And then here are the buttons and we're setting their is clickable property to true. So I can now go back and click on these. So here's French, and there's Bonjour Marianne. All right, thank you. That's what I wanted to show you for this program.